Hallo zusammen. Once more, I need to say, es ist Zeit. It is time. For a new Rammstein video about the song Zeit, Time. Because after having reacted to both the music video and the song for the first time, and also having analyzed the German lyrics in detail and given you some, well, English explanations of the lyrics, translations, whatnot, you know, what's interesting about them linguistically speaking, today I'm gonna be putting in the missing piece to the Rammstein puzzle, Zeit, which is me talking about the music video and how it correlates with the lyrics in my opinion, because of course that's all subject to interpretation, you know, and individual ideas and associations, but let's do it. Why not? Before I'm gonna start to give you some background why I'm doing this, this channel is about the German language and culture and, well, Rammstein, of course, are a huge part of both. And I like the band a lot and you guys seem to like them too, so that's a win-win situation. And if you really, really like Rammstein and the German language, feel free to check out my other Rammstein-related videos as well as my 700 plus other videos about the German language and culture and many interesting aspects about both. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. From my German perspective, I think this song is one of the most profound, mature and thought-provoking philosophical ones Till Lindemann especially, lyrically, has delivered to date. And the music video is top-notch, like top-tier quality as well. The video was directed by Robert Gwistek and produced by the Kreisfilm GbR, which was a first-time collaboration for the band. To me, it's astounding to think how visually fitting and impressive almost all music videos have been, despite having been directed and partially thought out by different directors throughout the years. As I've mentioned in my other videos, the song's title and overarching theme is Die Zeit, the time, the passing of time, how human beings are intertwined with time, space-time, and all the happy and sad connotations that come along with the passing of time, living, irreversibility, highlighted by using reversed scenes actually, change, mortality, carpe diem, dying, memento mori, and so on. There are basically two poles, if you will. One of them is being able to make the most of one's lifetime, and the other one being feeling totally helpless and exposed to time, and you can't do anything about it. The music video perfectly adopts common associations with time. For instance, using sand to show how time flows continuously. To me, the scenes with flowing sand in a mirrored way also reflect how every one of us human beings has their own reception of time and its passing. Yet, we are all bound to the same physical set of rules regarding time. Space and time are directly bound and connected, and we can't change, let alone escape it, and stop the passing of time. We all sit in the same boat, so to speak. And that's also quite literally the case in the music video. But beginning at the beginning of the 6 minutes and 19 seconds long video, I love how the director and his team have played with the imagination and expectation of the viewer. At first, we are underwater. We see the sun or a bright light shining down into the water from above, which could be seen as a metaphor for being caught in the river of time, including sort of a hope, meaning the sun or the bright light, in the distance, for instance to be able to go back in time, to reverse things. It's not until the 22nd second that we see what the rope was tied to, a sailor's neck. I love how the duality of time and its various associations got visualized by using reversing or reversed video footage. We immediately seem to know what happened. There are dead people underwater, they basically drowned. But we constantly keep learning more about the situation before, how it came to this and how this has unfolded, basically. Apart from visually intriguing images, both the metaphors of water and sand perfectly apply to time. Thinking about it, the fact that our human bodies largely consist of water, and in that metaphorical sense, time being an essential part of us, yet we can also swim, or keep track of our own time, and what to do with it, or even drown in it. We can waste our lifetime, sometimes we don't do the things we want to do in time, and then it's too late and we might regret it. All of that makes water, as time basically, a potentially really rich metaphor in this context. 
The lyrical eye states, manches sollte, manches nicht. Some things should have been, some things shan't. That could also reiterate that aspect of how we sometimes don't or can't do things in time and that might lead to a bad and dangerous outcome. In a direct reference to the music video, both lines Wir werfen Schatten ohne Licht, we cast shadows without light and Nach uns wird es vorher geben. After us, there will be a before. Perfectly match the sunken sailors. They are pretty much covered beneath the sea level, the water level. You can't see them from above. They're gone. They basically turned invisible to people on the surface while they are sinking and still exist. And in a way, as long as people remember loved ones that have passed, they never really die. But I guess some people die without anyone remembering them. And either way, time goes on. In a broader sense, these and other lines really reflect on how human beings interact with time necessarily, basically, because we're forced to do it, we're exposed to time, life, lifetime, you know. But in this specific case, in this specific video, I'm mainly gonna focus on what's being shown in the video and how that correlates with what the lyrics might express and tell me personally. Wir sterben lebend in den Tod. We're dying alive into death. That dying alive, lebend sterben, is really interesting because it is actually true. In one way, it shows that the change from living to dying can also be a very spontaneous and unforeseeable thing, which also says a lot about time and how, even though we're all caught in it, we can't predict certain things. And also, a bit more biologically speaking here, we slowly but surely begin to die at the moment of our birth and onwards, of course. While sailing on the sea, the sailors basically are confronted by huge waves and their ship is about to sink and drown when they directly face death as an entity. Respectively, the Grim Reaper, respectively, might as well be time. Or does death equal time? Hmm. I guess it's fair to say both are closely linked to say the least. Linguistically speaking, Till Lindemann makes use of various metaphors and contextual words that fit the visual scenery, including the line Dem Ende treiben wir entgegen, we drift towards the end or ending. And the word treiben, to drift, is very typical for, let's say, a float or, you know, a body floating, a ship floating in the water. As opposed to schwimmen, to swim, drifting, treiben, also implies that you can't change direction willingly and you can't really control everything yourself. You're basically lost to your own and you are confronted with higher forces, such as the rough sea that will guide and lead your way in some cases. Am Ufer winkt Unendlichkeit. Endlessness waves on or at the shore. That could also apply to the sailor's situation. They might be hopeful that they will reach the safe shore, a safe haven so to speak, but all they see is the sea around them. The horizon does not always show the next shore. Regarding our lifetime, we don't always see the next shore either. You know, our next phases in life and when we're gonna reach it, if we're gonna reach it at all. There are so many parameters that we either can't foresee, see, literally speaking, or predict, you know, in terms of us consciously realizing the passing of our own lifetime. Gefangen so im Fluss der Zeit. So very caught in the river of time. That one highlights the aforementioned duality of being aware of the fact that we all have to live with time passing, yet we don't know when certain things will happen. We can't manipulate time and control it. It's beyond our control. Gotta admit, admits the current circumstances in Europe, the shooting scene, that was a tough one to watch. And to me, showing the grown man reversing back to children, basically, that's a strong imagery that can be interpreted in so many different ways. It's very rich, visually speaking. In a sinister, rather pessimistic way, you could say that even though time passes, we as human beings change our lives and interaction in certain ways, but we still wage wars against each other, after so many decades and even centuries. We haven't really learned, but time still goes on. The line, doch die Zeit kennt kein Erbarmen, but time doesn't know of mercy, gets sung exactly when the young kid soldiers face the babies lying on the floor. That's a really strong scene in my book. And that also allows for many interpretations. 
Is the passing of time also a recurring passing of the same cycles, time and time again? An eternal fight against each other that we can't escape and, you know, that's just natural, maybe? Maybe we can't escape that cycle? Even though we all get older and time moves on, we don't always become smarter and make the same mistakes again and again, generation after generation. And if we aren't careful enough at some future point in time, we may even end our time, our lives, our existence as human beings by destroying ourselves in ways we ourselves have invented. For instance, by using mass destruction weapons. But even if that may happen at some point, time will still go on. Time doesn't depend on human beings to exist, similar how it didn't depend on dinosaurs to exist. It just doesn't. In the grand scheme of things, you know, the age of the universe, different species and how little time we actually have had on this planet, only a couple of thousands of years, that's pretty much nothing in the grand scheme of things. Because of the warlike shooting scene with the adults, the band members in that case, from before, we may at first think of corpses on the floor being bandaged, basically. At first sight. But then both we, as the viewer, and the kids in the video realize it's not corpses they have seemingly shot, it's babies lying on the ground. At first I didn't notice that either, but it's even more profound when you do. In the sense of time constantly moving forward, it could be seen as a warning to current generations, the young generations even, to really make sure that peace always has a chance. Diplomacy, that kind of stuff. Empathy and the ability to at least understand the thought process of someone else you're talking to, for instance, even though you might not agree with them. To make up your mind anew and anew to reflect certain things in yourself. We should not be doing bad or harmful things to others and waste away our time and our potential doing that. The entities carrying the babies in the reverse flowing sand shows that time is both beginning and ending at the same time. And also everything in between. Time is everything. Time exists all the time. Haha. <laughs> the band members help the mothers to give birth to the babies. Once the babies are born, the band members then hand the babies over to the entities, to time, basically, to life and the lifetime, which, as I've said before, also goes to show how immediate and directly linked the beginning of life and time ticking away and ticking down are connected. Also, the act of handing the babies away, to give them away, basically, from the mothers into life and time itself, that to me also shows that, you know, taking responsibility may, for some people at least, also start at a very young age. Sometimes childhood can be very innocent and, you know, just happy all the time. Sometimes it isn't. But the more time passes, the more responsibility you may have in life. And at some point, your mother or your father can't really protect you from everything, you know? You have to live your own life if you want to or not. The fact that the band members are blind and they can't see the entities, you know, being time, life, death or all in one, highlights that even though we know these things exist, we just can't grasp them. This idea is reflected in the line, wir sehen, doch sind wir blind. We see, yet we are blind. As human beings, we are aware of concepts like life, time, death, existence, mortality, and whatnot, right? We're aware of that. We have to deal with that. We're facing that every single day of our lives. Sometimes subconsciously, sometimes more consciously. But even though we know of those things, we can't really perceive them visually. You know, we can't smell them. We can't taste them. There is no way. But we still know they exist and we have to deal with them. We can neither control those things nor stop them. And in a biological, in a historic way even, we're part of time, life, death. We're all part of that. However, without seeing the babies being born, they catch them and they also directly and willingly, consciously hand them over to the entity so they know they are there. And that is really profound because, like I said before, we can't really touch time, but we know it's there and we act accordingly to it being there. Once human beings have realized that their lives are not eternal, some realize that even at a young age, for instance in a warlike situation, which also correlates with the aforementioned soldier scene and the kids looking really confused when they see the babies. 
Many of us try to swim against the passing of time, against getting older, against, well, basically dying at some point. Maybe even to the degree of actively wishing to travel to go back in time. However, going back in time is only an illusion which exists as memories and imaginations in our minds. But there is no real way back. And that's pr pretty much the struggle of life in a nutshell. In this context, them being blindfolded may as well express how naive and simply helpless some of us human beings are when we are desperately trying to undo time, to rewind time, to go back to happier days, seeing past loved ones again. We all know that. But as I've said, no matter how hard you try to rewind time, you can't, so it's always better and the only positive, optimistic option, basically, to remember the ancient Latin expression and phrase carpe diem, nutze den Tag. Make use of the day in the sense of make good and reflected use of the day. You know, it can be seen, I guess, as, well, a pressure, a pressurous situation. But on the other hand, I feel like that can also be a motivation. That really depends on the individual person, their context, you know, their social surroundings and all those kinds of factors that come into play here. I was also really moved by the farmer losing his daughter to time or to, you know, death in this case. No parent should see their children pass before them. But that also goes to show time and life isn't about being fair. Even though it's hard to say that, I know, but it just isn't fair. Sometimes the most philanthropic and friendly people in the world are the ones who die first and really early, you know, because of cancer, an accident, whatever. Time brings joy while it's possible to spend a lifetime together with your loved ones, but from one moment to the other, it also has the power to immediately end joy and bring sadness and sorrow. The stone-like picture frames with the faces of the band members may refer to what I have mentioned earlier. As long as there is a memory of someone in someone's mind or in the public eye, or for instance a portrait hanging somewhere, time or death can't fully take away a life and all those moments, those precious memories and experiences that came with it. But maybe many generations later, things may be different and have changed. Usually, we don't know too much about our ancestors from, you know, 600 or 700 years ago, do we? Let alone knowing anything, maybe. Yet, without them, and without their existence, and without certain choices they made in life, and sometimes also chance, luck, whatever, without all that, we wouldn't be here today. That also goes to show how time connects everything. It's the true overarching source of existence, and in fact came into existence itself with the creation of the universe, if you will. The Big Bang. The last impactful scene with the young girl vanishing and becoming one with the sand of time, that really hit me when I first watched the video. And you can see that in my reaction as well. It's such a strong scene and even though it is sad to let somebody go, biologically speaking, you know, the remains of a person and the particles of a deceased person could very well become parts of plants, trees that grow at some point in time. And to me, that thought has always been really helpful when coping with grief and loss and mourning. To really think of things as a continuum, various forms of energy not getting lost, completely at least. Present day Dave speaking here. Right now, after having made this video, I also wanted to include this little bit here to pay tribute to Taylor Hawkins. And I wish I could rewind time, go back in time, so that this wouldn't have happened. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, really, really devastated about his passing, especially being the longtime Foo Fighters fan that I am. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to get that out there as a little tribute here in a video of mine. I also made a podcast episode with my favorite memories regarding the Foos and their music, their albums and stuff as a tribute to Taylor, Dave and the other guys and um, to all the fans that are sad right now and mourning. So yeah, just wanted to get that out there. Rest in peace, Taylor.
I'm really looking forward to the album. Of course, I'm also going to talk about the other songs of the album, so stay tuned for that. And if you enjoyed this one, feel free to also watch my other two videos about the song Zeit. Check out the video description with links to my socials and support options for the channel, including Patreon or becoming a channel member. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm your Vlog Dave. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.